Shocking an audience is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it gets people talking, and attracts them to watch your movie in the first place. But on the other hand, it can just as easily cause them to dismiss your work, as if you had to resort to these cheap thrill tactics because you had nothing of substance to say. And with that in mind, Coralie Farjaz The Substance is currently functioning as a sort of cinematic Rorschach test. Some people see one of the best movies of the year, and others see an over-sexualized, gory extravaganza that devolves into an over-the-top mess. But to that second group, I would encourage them to think twice about what the movie actually achieves, and how it leaves its mark. Farja obviously knew she was being provocative. She said that when it came to critiquing the beauty industry, she wanted to explode and shatter everything in a violent and uncompromising way, because to shake this, we need an earthquake, a tsunami. We don't need to move this, we need to change the whole foundations of society. And that's why The Substance is one of my favourite movies of the year. Yes, it has that, oh my god, have you seen this shit factor, but it's also a biting piece of social commentary that has a lot to say about unattainable and unsustainable beauty standards, and how they influence our view of ageing, health and self-worth. Whether we like it or not, all of us will get old. The reality is that by the time you finish watching this video, you will be older than when you started it. Sadly, time moves in one direction, and no matter what you do, it will drag you with it. The question only becomes how you are going to age. Will you succumb to its inevitability, embrace it, or fight it? And if you fight it, what will you use as your primary weapon? Healthy lifestyle choices to live better for longer, or the superficial allure of cosmetics? At its core, the substance is really about our relationship with ourselves, our name, our reputation, our bodies, and how the pressure we put on ourselves to leave a mark or to be remembered is ultimately futile as then we're really allowing our self-worth or our life's meaning to be defined by other people. What do I want them all to say or think about me? When with a long enough timeline, even the people who we wanted to admire or remember us will also be forgotten. We are at best a whisper in the wind, a name on a piece of paper in history that might be referenced in passing, but will be ultimately irrelevant to the present moment. And that's what aging does, it slowly distances you from sexual and cultural relevance. As with our media and entertainment, the focus is always on youth. What's new, what's hot, and who's next? The French writer-director wrote this script after turning 40, and said that she had these massive thoughts that I had reached the age where I wasn't going to be useful or interesting to anyone anymore. And looking at the world around us, it's undeniable that aging negatively impacts women the most, as they endure the most social pressure to look their absolute best, whereas society allows men to age more gracefully, as they're judged through a different lens. But our lust for physical beauty fuels a vicious cycle, in which women judge each other and judge themselves, where nothing is ever good enough, where real people are competing with airbrushed, artificially created images of cosmetically altered bodies that are then weaponized against the public to trigger insecurity and ultimately sell more products. To the point that even the people who are idolized cannot live up to the expectations that they helped to create, as they are competing with an almost fictional version of themselves. The substance shows us that for those lucky enough to be considered good looking, it's both a blessing and a curse. As if your appearance can open doors and give you things others simply don't have access to, then over time you have more to lose. As once your looks begin to fade, it will feel as if everything is slowly being taken away from you. And then you'll realise that you were never really that important, or valued as much as everyone made you feel. You were just the next generation of the cycle on the never-ending conveyor belt of beauty that gets chewed up and spat out. As there's always someone younger, someone prettier, someone to fill that role of sexual relevance. And while the substance is obviously focusing on women in the media, these public figures have a trickle-down effect on us all. As by overvaluing youth the way the modern world does, our society fosters a live fast, die young, YOLO philosophy, where living more and doing more now is all that matters. 
And Farjaz's film does a great job of demonstrating these two halves of your life by reminding both Elizabeth and Sue that they are one. They're represented by two different entities, but they are physically connected. For instance, if Sue takes extra time to party and have fun while she's young, then Elizabeth will have to live with those physical consequences later on. This is because looking good is not always synonymous with being healthy. People are willing to put their bodies through hell to look more attractive. They'll inject themselves, starve themselves, and overexercise. This is why we're shown that between the two characters, it feels like only Sue's young and hot life matters, as that's all our society values, while Elizabeth ends up locked away like Dorian Gray. But the more time Sue spends living her best life, the larger the debt grows, and eventually that bill has to be paid, as you can only push your body so far. What has been used on one side is lost on the other side. There is no going back. This element of the story represents the reality that if you burn the candle at both ends while you're young, you'll burn bright, but you'll burn fast. And there will be a harsher mess to clean up when you're older. This is why, if there is a message I took from the substance, it's that we need to take a healthier, more balanced view of our lives as a whole, and value ourselves no matter what age we are. As otherwise, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that being old will be terrible, as we will be creating that reality for ourselves with our reckless decisions. Think about it, if we didn't fetishize youth so much, then we wouldn't have to resent and punish ourselves for inevitably aging, and it would also be harder for advertisers to capitalize on those insecurities. Because the substance really shows us that in a world of unattainable and unsustainable beauty standards, no one really wins, as it's fueled by self-hatred. As long as we hate who and what we see in the mirror, then we're always a viable customer, either to consume content, buy products, or undergo surgery, putting our appearance and the validation of others above our own health. Which leads us to the controversial ending to the movie, so if you haven't seen it, do go watch it first as there's going to be some spoilers here. When Sue's body begins to fall apart, starting with her teeth falling out, she has now come to the end of the road. The well of youth and beauty has run dry. She's going to have to take drastic action to have any chance of ever being appreciated again. So she injects herself with the substance a second time, creating a third version of herself. But rather than giving birth to a younger, better, more beautiful model, it concocts Monstro Elizasu, a hideous monster-looking creature. So now the protagonist ironically has to cover up her new face with a cut-out photo of the old face she never appreciated. Just like so many people hate their own bodies, even while they're young, always wishing they looked slightly different. And it's only when they're older that they can look back and recognize how beautiful they really were. So if Elizabeth had just accepted that she was older but still beautiful in a different way, she could have avoided this whole mess. But because she felt rejected and irrelevant, she artificially altered her body for more time in the spotlight. And now her dream of maintaining the perfect body has turned into a physical nightmare. But the film shows us that no matter how she looks, she still goes through her beauty routines, trying to make the best of what she has left, which highlights how bizarre these behaviours were to begin with, and also holds a mirror up to her own judgement, as if you think it's funny or absurd because she's so hideous, then you're using the very value system that creates this cycle to begin with. You're sort of believing that she's unworthy of even trying to be beautiful. Now for a lot of viewers, this final chapter is where they checked out of the movie, as it really goes off the rails. Once she gets attacked and treats it like a monster that needs to be destroyed, it becomes an excessive blood and guts affair. But as over the top as this feels, it's still symbolic of how often those that are the most committed to cosmetic surgery do so while knowing that there's a chance the procedure completely backfires, and they could be left looking botched or disfigured in their quest to look their best. 
And then the very people who they were trying to impress will not sympathize with their misfortune or appreciate their efforts, but instead they'll turn on them, mock them, and cast them out, as there's no long-term way to win this game. No one stays young forever, no one can look their best every day, and those that appear to require complimentary lighting, personal trainers, professional hairstylists, talented makeup artists, and camera crews to create that illusion. So if you value something unattainable, then you are ensuring that happiness, peace, and self-acceptance will be unattainable for you too. But the movie then closes with a harsh reminder that as much as we push ourselves to be seen, accepted, wanted, appreciated, or remembered, in the end, our time on this planet and beyond will continue to pass. And whether it's on a gravestone or a Hollywood star, we too will all fade into obscurity and irrelevance, to make room for the new, the next, and the apparently important. So don't let anybody tell you that the substance is just cheap shock value, because behind its superficial veneer, the substance has substance. Well, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you for watching, but if you could now give the video a like, possibly even leave a comment and click on that subscribe button, it will encourage that mysterious algorithm to do its thing.